Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Lorraine with Lorraine Murray Fitness and I have been talking about living with anxiety and PTSD and I am sharing my story with you of how this happened, how the PTSD came about, how my anxiety has been revved up and worse than ever and today I'm talking about the third part of my story and that's the part when I finally sucked up the fact that I couldn't fix this on my own, I couldn't deal with it on my own, and I decided to get professional help. Now, this was incredibly hard for me because, as, in I, as I talked about in my last video, I didn't feel justified in having these issues. I didn't feel like my situation was bad enough to have PTSD or be so scared all the time. And after months, well not months, it was probably a month and a half of dealing with this on my own, I realized that I couldn't do it on my, own, on my own, so I seeked professional help. And this was hard for me because I didn't want to go, but I just realized that I was getting worse instead of getting better like I should. So I decided to get help, and you know, I don't remember a lot about the counseling or the therapy. I don't remember what we talked about. I remember talking about how I had this fear before it ever happened. Sorry guys, my hair is wild today. Don't mind that. Um, but I remember talking about some of the things that have happened in my life that maybe had given me the fear of feeling like this was going to happen to me anyway. But I don't remember talking about a ton of things, so there's not a lot to share with you about that. The thing that I wanted to share with you and to talk to you about is how I started dealing with being able to be at home being able to function and what we went about doing to help me get there. So after we got through the story of my history and all of that and, you know, talking through the situation that happened and how I felt, it was time to set goals. Just like in everything else in your life, you set goals to achieve something. Well, if you've ever been to therapy for something like this, you know that there's goal settings. And if you haven't, let me tell you that therapy is not just talking especially at least when you're dealing with PTSD. It is not just about having a conversation and coming back and talking about more. There are goals and it's hard. Like this was probably harder than any other challenge I've had in my life. So we would set goals based on what she thought was appropriate that you know I should be able to do at this time or that we felt that I really needed to work on. So we set goals and, and I don't remember the time frame of this happening, but I know we tried setting goals. And then I couldn't do them. I, I couldn't achieve these goals. Like I would fail every time and it was miserable because I'm like, why can't I do this? And we finally got to the point where we realized that I needed medicine to help me. I was so anxious and so scared all the time that I couldn't even attempt the goals that I had set for myself because I couldn't function. So she sent me off to a doctor. She was not able to prescribe medicine. So I went back to my OBGYN since I was breastfeeding and I told him what happened and he was surprised I had made it that long without medicine. But he gave me medicine and I started taking it. And then we continued with therapy and we tried the goals again after the medicine had set in. So I just wanted to tell you some of the goals that I did. Um, the easier goals. Now, to you, this might not seem like a big deal or you'd be like, how is this even possible? But let me just tell you that these were so hard. I felt like I was dying. I couldn't breathe when I was doing these. My chest hurt. I would like shake. I would start panicking and it was hard. So don't think that even though these sound so simple, they were simple tasks for me or for anyone that has to go through this. These tasks are not easy. The reason they're goals is because they can't do them. So I'm just gonna list a few of them, the ones that came to the top of my head of things I had to do or try and work on during the week before I came back. So one of the things I remember so distinctly was trying to do the dishes. And that sounds kind of silly because it's just doing the dishes, why can't you do that? But the way my house was set up, the, the sink and the dishwasher were hidden behind a wall so I could not see the front of the house. And one of the major things I had to do was I always had to have access to the front of my house where my driveway is because those people surprised me and I didn't hear them and I had to always hear what was going on. So one of my goals was just doing the dishes and being able to stand in that spot where I couldn't see my house for the duration of doing the dishes. 
Uh, another one was trying to stay home for like 30 minutes after Steve left for work so that I could, I could work up my time of being home alone. So I would still get up with Steve. There was no way I was sleeping while he was gone, but I would stay. I would let Raylan sleep and I would stay for at least 30 minutes and try to extend that as time went on. Another simple one, watching TV without walking to the front of my house. My living room, everything but my dining room was behind the garage. So I couldn't see my, the front of my house or my driveway. So watching a TV show without getting up, without going to check to see if anybody was there. That was a huge one. And I, with the noise, I couldn't hear. So it was very challenging for me to just sit there and enjoy television. Another one that, and these all didn't happen at one time, guys. This, this was over weeks and weeks and a lot of hours of practice. So don't think I did this all one week. It was, it was one at a time. Another one was laying Raylan upstairs for a nap, laying her down and coming back down, and just going upstairs for like 10 minutes at a time and not needing to be in my downstairs for the fear of needing to be able to run and escape. Um, another one was if I did leave the house and I came home, I had to try to do my routine without calling Steve, without being on the phone with him. So those were some of the easier goals that we tried doing. They were not easy at all. They were horrible and I hated every minute of it. But over time, I was able to start doing these more and more. I had horrible days sometimes where I still had to leave. I, I couldn't be there. If something triggered me, I was out that door faster than you could imagine. But as I practiced, I got better. And just like you do anything with consistency, I was talking about this today on my um, fitness page, with consistency, you get results. So the more consistent I was with doing these things, the better I got at them. So after we got through some of these easier ones, we started doing harder things, which was staying home for hours instead of just 30 minutes or, or whatever, or coming home before Steve got off work and staying there. And actually being there in the afternoon was harder because that's when the break-in happened. And that was just a trigger point for me that time of day. Still is a little bit to this day. Um, but I had to try to stay home for longer periods of time without going anywhere. One that took forever was going outside of my house in the middle of the day with Raylan by myself about someone babysitting me or watching me. And that one took a long time. Um, I still don't love that either. These are still things that I struggle with today, but going outside for short periods of time and playing with sidewalk chalk or taking a walk or, any, or you know something like that. Um, oh, what is this? I, I can't even read my writing, guys. I don't know what that says. But anyway, the last one that I'm going to tell you guys about is not calling Steve when I was scared. One of the things I always resorted to was either calling Steve or my mom because my mom was always available to talk to me. If I had that, if, if I started feeling that panic feeling, we worked on techniques to get me through that. And I want to share those with you too. But when I was feeling scared, I wasn't allowed to call Steve or my mom. I had to deal with that feeling of fear and get through it without having to resort to calling someone. Of course, if I really started going into a panic attack, I was allowed to call someone, but I needed to, to kind of like fester in that fear so that I could feel that and then come out of it knowing that nothing happened to me because I was always scared something was gonna happen. But when we talk about um, feeling scared and things like that, I, I, I taught, or the t like how I dealt with that was breathing, of course breathing, um, just taking deep breaths and literally repeating to myself that you're okay right now. I couldn't think about the past, I couldn't think about the future, but I had to focus on the very moment, that very breath, that nothing bad was happening, happening to me or my child in my house. We were okay. And I just had to continually sit there and go, I'm okay, nothing's happening. It's, it's a feeling, it's, it's an imaginary feeling. Well, it's real, but you know, there's nothing harming me right now. There is no threat. It is your brain. It is an emotion. And if you just get through it, you're going to know that you're okay in this moment. And as I continued to practice that, I could get through those really hard, panicky moments. It didn't work every time, but I just, I couldn't think in the future or in the past because those got me in trouble. So I always had to be very focused on my next move, what I was doing at the moment, what was going on around me. And over time, those techniques really helped me deal with that fear and the, the panic that just 
sets in. If you've ever had any sense of like great fear, you just know your whole body just, it just tightens up. Um, so anyway, you just get this feeling of panic and it's horrible. And you know, with those techniques that I was talking about, you really can live in the moment instead of living in the past or the future. And you know, I carry those techniques on with me today. Um, there are days that I still really struggle and that's what gets me through a lot of it. But you know, I just wanted to let you guys know that I didn't conquer this on my own. I wouldn't even say I conquered it yet, but I definitely didn't get through this on my own and seeking professional help was the best thing I could do. I will say about the medicine situation, I knew that I didn't want to be on medicine forever. That was kind of one of my personal goals was I didn't want to have to use medicine to deal with this for the rest of my life. So I did use it for a year, I'm trying to think. Yeah, about a year. Um, I decided we, well, I didn't decide. We decided we wanted to have another kid and I wanted to come off of it before that. So I used the medicine for about a year and I slowly came off of it. And by then I had felt confident enough that I could handle these things without it. And if I needed to go back on it, I was going to, but I, I chose to try this on my own. After I learned the techniques, I learned the tips and the tricks to help me. And I continuously practice them for the year that I had been going. Um, I was able to come off the medicine. So, you know, if you're out there and you're in counseling and you're on medicine, you know what? Maybe you're never going to be able to come off medicine, but that's okay. And if you want to, work at it. Keep working. I know it's not easy and days are really hard, but just know that it doesn't have to be the end solution. There are alternatives and that's between you and your counselor, your therapist, and your family. But just know that my story ended with not needing all of that. I got the tools and worked really hard to get to where I am to be able to live my life the way I am now without the help of medicines. And if I needed them, I would go back on them and I'm still not opposed to that. It's just I have been able to handle it from that time on without the use of it. But just know that you aren't alone if, you, if you're seeking out professional help and if you're sitting there and you're going, you know what, this sounds like me and I really, maybe I should seek professional help. I encourage you to do that. You, I thought I could do it on my own. I didn't wanna go. I felt like I should hide that I was going, but now I want to share that with you because it saved my life. It saved me from getting so far down in this hole, this trap that you feel that I was able to come back out of it and be able to live my life relatively normal, normally. And um, I just encourage you to, you know, find the help you need to make yourself feel better. But I will be back and we are going, oh, I'm excited about the next topic that we're talking about on this because I had to face the man that broke into my house face to face, side by side in court. And let me tell you that that was an interesting experience. So tomorrow I will be talking about what the experience was like of facing the person that was destroying my life. So don't forget to jump back on tomorrow and um, listen to part four of this story. I'm excited to share that with you because it is, it's, it's unique. So thank you guys again for the support. Thank you guys for the messages and the love and the comments. But I will be back to share more of it, and I hope you join me. Have a good night. Bye.